And then there's oh, the ghost theory of- right. I think you said go straight. And I was like, I don't think Homestuck turned anyone straight. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Homestuck, the Internet's Ulysses. Or Hachu for short. This is the podcast where we compare Homestuck and Ulysses bit by manageable bit. I'm your host, Jamie, resident linguistics major. And I'm your co-host, Kira, resident gay boy. You can find me at K-I-Y-Y-E on Tumblr and Patreon or K-I-Y-Y-E-S on Instagram. And you can find me at jamietamar.wordpress.com and on Instagram as Jamie Tamar. That's J-A-I-M-E-T-A-M-A-R. My WordPress is movie, apparently, and book and performance reviews, and I love them. And my Instagram is pictures of the books and movies and performances that I review. And also cosplay if you scroll back far enough. And my Tumblr is a whole lot of homestuck, and so is also all my everything else. Yep. 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 (laughs) <laughs> All right, so welcome to episode one of Homestuck the Internet's Ulysses. Hopefully you listened to our introductory episode, which was episode zero, where we just introduced ourselves and talked about the podcast and what it's all about. And this yeah, is our... uh, what was episode zero called, Kira? Would you like to remind us? Oh, it was, <laughs> it was called Buck Wild Mulligan. <laughs> and we remember because we literally finished recording it three minutes ago. <laughs> yep, yeah, you have to wait two weeks, but we we didn't, so... That's the benefit of making it yourself. <laughs> Except we're not really, like, ingesting this as content. Like, we're... Well, are we, though? The podcast? As we're making it, are we ingesting it as content? <laughs> are you ingesting media while you create media? That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> okay. So, um, basically what we're going to do, our structure is we're going to have some reading questions that both of us have made up. I made the Homestuck reading questions and Jamie made the Ulysses reading questions. So first we're going to do the Homestuck reading questions and then we're going to talk a little bit about Homestuck Act 1 and what we felt about it. And then after that, we're going to do the Ulysses reading questions and then we're going to do a little discussion about Ulysses and what we liked and Buckwild Mulligan. How many questions did you have? Five. Okay, great. We each have five questions. We're going to assign a point for every question we get right and then compete. Compete. Oh, I'm we should not make competitive. We but... should make I'm very competitive. We should make like a graph on the on the Tumblr. Let's make a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet. Yeah. Let's have we need a leaderboard on the Tumblr. Kira will make a leaderboard on the Tumblr later. Yes, I will. Keep up with who's winning. It's gonna be me because I've already read Homestuck. Yeah, probably. <laughs> How easy are your questions? Um, I told you you could make yours hard because I've already read Homestuck and because I think mine were kind of hard. The last one I have requires a very detailed answer. So I've already told myself that if you get the whole question, if you say everything I have written down, I'll give you two points for it. But mm-hmm. I highly doubt you're going to be able to. And you can't look at Spark Notes or Ulysses while you're answering it because that's cheating. I'm going to fail yours. I just know it. <laughs> I have a good memory, but I think I'm going to fail. Cool. Mine, looking over mine, they look easy to me, but I think that's just because I'm me, and I really don't know how you're going to do. They're kind of kind of niche. Cool. Well, let's get started. Let's, All right. Let's do this. Let's, get, let's dive into it. Um, question one. This is an easy one. What is the fake name that John is given at the beginning of the comic? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my god. I gosh. remember Roses. <laughs> Are you serious? I uh, almost put Roses as, like, question five, but then I chose something else. Well, Roses is flighty broad. Yep. Um, Zoo Smell Poop Lord. Yep. There you yes. go. I was One like, point. I definitely know that. <laughs> <laughs> I like tried to type it in as it was typing when I read the when I was reading it. Okay. One point for Jamie. Question two. Can you name me any two of John's posters, movie posters? Name me the movies. Con Air. Yep. That's one. Um. Is that the? Is there? A, is there one with like? I, no, that's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe that should have been a two pointer, but like, and like one poster. No, one. no, I should have known more of those. I just yeah. like, I just read it. Like, I like, I just read it. I should know, but I don't. 
I listed only the ones that stuck out to me from when I was reading, but I if if you had gotten said one that I didn't have on this list, I would have gone to the John Wikipedia page. Or not Wikipedia, the Homestuck Wiki page. Just just so you know. Um but I had written down Little Monsters, Con Air, Deep Impact, and Ghostbusters. Little Monsters. If I was going to get another one, it would have been Little Monsters. Because they have the, the conversation about Little Monsters. Yes, I was trying to remember that one. I only remember Con. Is that the Nick Cage one? Are they all Nick Cage? No, they're not all Nick Cage. Ghostbusters is obviously not Nick Cage. Okay, yeah, 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 that's true. I knew that. But, um... Have you seen Con Air? No. I kind of didn't even believe it was a real movie, but, like, you know. <laughs> Great. Um... Okay, question three. This one's a little more niche. Um, what day was the beta launch supposed to be that John was supposed to receive the disc on and he and he did not yet? Is it April 10th? Yep. I know that because I looked at Homestuck beta and the actual Homestuck is like, it's April 13th, your birthday. But the beta is like, it's April 10th, your birthday. And I was like, oh no, my Homestuck reality is shattered. I forgot that it said that in the in the beta version that you can click to Mm -hmm. that was not as hard as i thought it would be okay let's go question four what does the bracket s bracket stand for before the flashes like what does the s stand for sound yeah that's good i literally didn't realize that until this read through really seven times (laughs) seven times kira (laughs) what I feel like that, like, doesn't he say that? Isn't he like, if there's going to be sound, sound. He says it. I just ignored it every single time. Oh, my God. I have no idea how I didn't notice. Like, I literally don't know. Like, I read that and I was like, is this new? I was like, did they edit this in? Like, when they. Nope, they did not. Like. (laughs) Okay, what are you, four out of, or three out of four so far? Three out of four. I didn't get the poster one. Okay. Question five. What is John's internet browser? The uh, is that the slime boy? <laughs> no, that's his background. I have no idea. Do you want to take a wild guess or can you give me a hint? It's uh um, Is it real? No. It's a fake, fakey fake fantasy. And it is symbolic. Well, I don't even know if it's symbolic, but it's it's significant later in the comic. Uh, it's is it Sky in there? No. No, then I have no idea. Also, an allusion to mythology. It's Typhius is his browser. I would have never gotten that in a million years. Haha! I vested you. No, nope, never <laughs> would have gotten that. And later, it is also his denizen. Ah, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. his denizen is the denizen. Denizen. Denizen, denizen. is the internet. Ooh, maybe. The one evil we must all defeat. (laughs) (laughs) Ralph breaks the internet, more like John Egbert breaks the (laughs) typhus. Okay, that was three out of five. It was pretty good. Cool. So let's get into it. Homestuck, act one. You liked it. I did. I actually (laughs) didn't take notes on Ulysses. I only took notes on Homestuck, so we'll see what happens there. I took notes on both, but only, like, half a page on Ulysses and, like, three pages on Homestuck. I'm just an idiot. I have notes on Ulysses written in my Ulysses book, not with me. Oh, nice. I was actually looking at over the... Well, I guess this is this is jumping a little into Ulysses territory while we're still talking about Homestuck, but I'd like to plug... Uh, Jamie showed me a really good comic adaption of Ulysses called Ulysses Scene that I was looking over after I read episode one, and I really liked it. And it and you can mouse over the Latin for translations. So oh yeah, that's Ulysses Scene, like S E E N, yes. not like a, like a scene on, of a play. Yeah, actually, <laughs> that's a really good segue into my first note, which is I don't know if we talked about. I think we did talk about this, which is that Homestuck would be literally just as confusing as Ulysses if it didn't have visuals. Like when I was reading the Ulysses comic, I feel like we can talk about both of them at the same time. Like this yeah. is not a like Homestuck section and Ulysses section. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. When I was reading Ulysses, there's this scene where like Stephen and Haynes and Buck are all walking together on the beach, and then like Buck walks ahead of them because Haynes and Stephen are like talking about. Haynes is trying to get Stephen to tell him his opinion of Hamlet. And, like, I did not understand when I was reading it, like, what physical configuration they were in. 
Um, and then in the comic, when you actually see, like, Haynes next to him, like, leaning over, like, to talk to him, I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. And I was then, when I was, I read Ulysses first this time. Maybe I'll do it the other way this time. Maybe I'll read Homestuck first. When I read Homestuck and I was reading, I was like, if I didn't have visuals, I mean, obviously, like, Ulysses is not written to have visuals, whereas Homestuck obviously is, but, like, Homestuck didn't have pictures and it was just a young man stands in his bedroom. That's a pretty visual sentence. But like so many it. things happen and you'd be like, wait, what does that even mean? <laughs> yeah. You couldn't see it happening. Read That's so true. the inverse of that being when you see Ulysses happening, you're like, oh, suddenly this can like make sense. That's we'll so see, true. But addendum to that, we'll see how that develops over the course of the story because Telemachus is written very normally <laughs> compared to the entire rest of the novel. <laughs> so we'll see if that continues to be the case or if it's just crazy. I'm pretty sure this is kind of jumping. This is jumping literally to the last episode of you of Ulysses. That's the infamous one with like four pieces of punctuation and the entire thing. And people perform that. And I'm going to make us watch a performance. Okay, my second note here is that is I have on the same line, which is why I'm saying it without pausing to let Kira speak. Is there a No Fear Ulysses? Great question. Like, there's a spark notes for it with the chapter summaries and stuff. But, like, I, like I'm not even going to talk about that. Well, I noticed that I was about to say this earlier, but I let you go on. But I don't think Ulysses seeing the comic even goes up through the whole thing. Oh, boy. <laughs> Did you check? I think it's only, like, the first three chapters or something. So, I think that's interesting. I haven't seen the No Fear Ulysses. And I was we were trying to find a crash course and i didn't see a crash course ulysses either i saw there was a crash course video on ulysses but it was like a summary and i don't think there's a crash course on each episode so interesting lack of spark noty equivalent except thingies. for actual spark notes except for actual spark notes good on you spark notes <laughs> yeah i already said this to kira before we were recording actually it might have been in episode zero how like you read Ulysses and you're like okay these are some words and then you read the spark notes and you're like oh okay I kind of get that and then I was literally like I was rereading just now before we started recording I was rereading episode one and I was reading a part from the very beginning Stephen Dedalus displeased and sleepy leaned his arms on the top of the staircase and looked coldly at the shaking gurgling figure that blessed him equine in its length and at the light untonsured hair grained and hued like pale oak I read that which one is a beautiful sentence but I read it and I was like yeah okay and for a second my brain actually thought I was reading the spark notes because it like made so much sense to me which it definitely didn't the first time I read it yep so read things twice people you'll understand them <laughs> I feel like, uh, I feel as if maybe we should do a little summary of what happened in Homestuck Act 1 and then a little summary when we get on to Ulysses about what happened so that we can know what we're, people can know what we're talking about if they're not reading along. Do you agree? Yeah, would you like me to summarize Homestuck and you can summarize Ulysses? Oh yes, that's such a sexy idea. <laughs> <laughs> so Homestuck Act 1, you only ever see John and then a bit of Rose. John, it starts out, it's mostly John, because he's the main character. So he's in his room, and he's like, oh man, I really, really want this game. He's like talking to his friends on a client. They call them clients. Pester application. Chum, I mean, it's on Pester Chum. Yeah, Pester which are homestuck. Client. You know what that is. If you don't, it's basically like, it's a messaging. It's like Facebook yeah. Messenger, yeah. but horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I no, can't imagine perfect. using it. <laughs> I have the, the somebody coded a long time ago, the an actual like pester chum that you can use. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And so he's messaging his friends and he's like, he has two friends whose names we don't know yet. I don't remember their pester chum handles. Turn tech godhead and tentacle therapist. I remember the tentacle therapist. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so TG, who's red text. Um, who, spoiler alert, is Dave Strider. And he is all like, I don't want to play the game. Game sounds boring. And John's like, I want to play it. And then TG is like, you should talk to TT because she's been pestering me to play it. And then John has a whole bunch of adventures where he like runs through his house trying to avoid his dad, as 13-year-old boys tend to do, <laughs> trying to get this game from the mail. And he eventually gets it, and then he starts playing with TT, Tentacle Therapist, or Rosalond, the best girl in the whole world. So then Rose is playing with John, and Rose is literally like picking up pieces of his house and like moving them around. That's part of the game. How does that work? Don't know, but it does. <laughs> just does just does just the way it is 
But then she ends up, like, dropping his bathtub in the middle of his house. Yep. And her internet connection dies. Then we see Rose for the first time. Beautiful, wonderful, amazing, perfect lesbian that she is. Uh, And she has to run through her house trying to avoid her mom to the top of her house or something? Like, like observatory? Yes, an observatory. To get a better Wi-Fi connection so that she can reconnect to John. All the while, a ominous countdown is ticking. Act one ends with John presumably getting hit by this asteroid meteorite comet celestial object. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty good summary. Um, yeah, yeah. Do, do your questions first, and then I'll, I'll okay. s- summarize. Okay, question one. Why do people say that Steven is responsible for killing his mother? These questions are going to be a lot less humorous than Kira's because Ulysses is a lot less humorous than Homestuck. Well, that's debatable. That is debatable, but it's Actually, not meant to be comedy, unlike yeah. Homestuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wait, say the question again. Why do people say that Steven is responsible for killing his mother? Oh, fuck. Well, uh, Buck Mulligan is, is shading him for not kneeling... What was he doing? Like, it wasn't just kneeling, he was refusing to do. He was refusing to pray. Yes, okay. Because he's all atheism y and. Yes, the Catholic. answer I had was he refused to pray for her on her deathbed, and that traumatized her so much that she died. I got it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. I got it? <laughs> yeah, you got that. Okay. Um, what is Buck Mulligan's full name? Oh, um, I remember this because there was a really funny joke about dactyls. Hold yes, on. Yes, I have that in here. Uh, m- but it's not, it starts with, like, an M or something. It, like, isn't, but, it's, like, mm, mer, mul, no, that's just his last name. Wait, fuck. It's, like, d- oh, shit. I was looking at it just a minute ago, because I was, like, haha, it's two dactyls. I know. This is, that's my new reference for, like, what is a dactyl? I'm, like, oh, da-da-da-da-da-da. What? Ah, 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 you're gonna say it. I'm gonna get so annoyed. Hold on. Hmm. Do you want to come back to that one? Yeah, come back to that one. Okay. okay. Which Shakespearean play do Haynes and Stephen discuss after breakfast? I said this like two minutes ago. Hamlet. Yeah. Um, what object does Buck Mulligan describe as a symbol for Irish art? The mirror, the cracked mirror. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stephen says that, quote, two masters, unquote, stand in the way of his free thinking and want him for odd jobs. Can you name either of these masters or the epithets that Stephen uses for them? Um. Yes. He says... I think he, I'm pretty sure he says one is English and one is Italian. And then he says the Catholic Church and, does he just say the United Kingdom and the Catholic Church? And then the odd jobs is Ireland. Yes, very good. Ah. You got both points for that. Woo! Okay, can you tell me Buck Mulligan's full name? Oh God. Mm. I really want this point. Yeah, then you'll have twice as many as I do. Ugh. Ugh. You were right about the first letter earlier. Oh, is it really M? Mm-hmm. Ma- M- Mul- M- Muriel. No, that's... The L yeah. is pretty. The L is the L is there. Mal... Mm-hmm. Mal... Mal? Is that the right for soul? Yes, it is. Malady, no. Interpreter maladies. Um, <laughs> Maladin. Malad, malad, malado, mal, mal, Malachi. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm Malachi so proud. Mulligan, two dactyls. Two dactyls. <laughs> I would. I love that. I love it when random people are just like, haha, meter. <laughs> Me too. Great. Okay, let's move into more. Okay, I have to literature. summarize it. Oh, yeah. Summarize Ulysses for us. Okay. So it starts out with plump, stately Buck Mulligan. I forget the rest nope, of the sentence. No, that's not the order. Oh, the stately plump. <laughs> okay. it starts with S. Yeah, 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 it starts with S. Okay. And he's doing performing a mock mass with the shaving bowl, like half naked on the top of a tower, which is pretty <laughs> blasphemous, apparently. Is the tower phallic imagery? Ooh. Steven Dedalus is also there, and he's they're like friends, but are they really? They're friends. And then Stephen has this whole thing where he's all like, there's a bunch of random Latin thrown in. And then Buck Mulligan is all like, ah, oh, look at you, Kinch. And he always calls him that. And then Stephen is all like, that cracked mirror you're holding is a symbol of Irish 
art and literature or something. And then Buck Mulligan's like, wow, that's really sharp. And then he kind of makes fun of it for him because later they're talking to Haynes, who is an Englishman. And I'm kind of getting the vibe that he's like an Irish fetishist. Um, <laughs> and and then... Yeah, uh, considering he speaks Irish. <laughs> yeah, he speaks Irish. And then the he's milk... He's an Ir- Iraboo. <laughs> yeah, so he's that. Buck Mulligan and Stephen go down into the tower and then like he's there, Haynes is there, and then Buck Mulligan's all like, oh, this Stephen guy, he's smart. Uh, he he does literature and shit. And he made this really good metaphor earlier about mm, symbol, ir- mirror, Irish literature. And he's got this great theory about Hamlet. And Haynes is like, oh, you must tell me about your theory about Hamlet. Stephen's kind of edgy and broody. And I he's dream about a Black Panther. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, and then he had a dream, Haynes had a dream about a Black Panther and was yelling about it, and so Stephen hates him for it. Um, <laughs> also, a bit earlier, I forgot about where St- Buck is, like, making fun of Stephen and his horrible, like, like uh, relationship with his mom, basically. Because his mom was like, I'm dying, and Stephen was like, I'm not going to pray for you because I'm ultra-atheist. And then his mom was like, oh no, I'm dying now, I'm dead. I'm dying even more now. <laughs> And then Stephen's all like, well, yeah, but you're an asshole, too, because you called my mom beastly dead. And then Buck's like, what? I didn't do that. And Stephen's like, yeah, you did. And then after that, they're eating breakfast, and then there's no milk for the tea, and they're really angry. And then a milk lady comes with the milk, and then Haynes is, like, speaking Irish to her, and she's like, is that French? And he's like, no, it's Irish. I thought you were Irish. And she was like, oh, I'm Irish, but I don't speak Irish. And Haynes is like, oh, well, I speak Irish, but I'm not Irish. And then... Stephen was like, this is a metaphor. And so then after that, they go down to... I forget where they're going. They're just walking, I guess. They're just walking down the beach. Or maybe we'll find out. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. And then Haynes is all, like, talking to Stephen about Hamlet. And Stephen's like, I've got this theory about Hamlet. And Haynes is like, wow, very interesting. And then he's like, sorry about oppressing Ireland all the time. <laughs> and then Buck Mulligan is in the water. And then Stephen's like, usurper. And that's how it ends. There you go. Now you know what happened. I have not read, I will read soon, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, of which I believe Stephen Dedalus is the main character, and people say it's important to read before you read Ulysses. I'm also trying to read The Odyssey again, but I'm busy. Anyway, did you have more notes, Kira? Okay, I have some notes here on on similarities. Do you want to just talk about that? Talk about stuff we find similar? I have a note that as far as I can tell, has absolutely nothing to do specifically with either Homestuck or Ulysses. It just is about literature. I don't remember what I was reading. It was something we were talking about, I think. And I don't remember what it was. Anyway, yeah, say your thing. My thing is apparently unrelated. Okay, here's my a note that I thought was interesting. I feel like Dave is like stream of consciousness. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I feel like Homestuck has a very stream of consciousness vibe to it. I feel like the way Dave writes, and we've talked about this before, just like for fun, because we're nerds. By the way, this podcast is literally just an extension of all of the conversations Kira and I have all the time. Oh, yes. (laughs) I feel like the way, like you've said before, how you feel like Homestuck may or somehow have influenced like how we write online. But I feel like When you're texting someone, it is stream of consciousness in the sense that it's like it's word vomit. You're not editing what you're saying. You're just like kind of letting it all out as it goes. Well, apparently some of us edit our texts, but only Kira. Most people (laughs) don't do that. I do edit my texts. And I feel like the way Dave writes is just kind of like stream of consciousness. And the fact it is stream of consciousness, but because it's like texting, because all of his dialogue so far we've seen is like in the pester chum messaging format and because of that basically what i'm trying to say is yes i think it's stream of consciousness i don't know to what extent the format it's read in makes it easier to understand or if it's actually just like a lesser level of stream of consciousness than ulysses or like as i lay dying Mm -hmm. or things that are like actual stream of consciousness you know what i mean yeah yeah if you if you okay i think if you took all of dave's dialogue and you just put it in a paragraph and you use that horrible dialogue notation in ulysses with the dashes it'd Mm -hmm. be real confusing (laughs) Um, speaking of, I had a good segue phrase for this, but I forgot about it, but you had an interesting theory that you posed to me over text a while ago, back after you read Homestuck, you read the act one for the first time when you were rereading it, and you were like, is the all caps when the narrator is talking and describing John's room, is that the mayor who, if you haven't read Homestuck, 
later sort of a, a lot of parts in Homestuck I feel play on the concept of like a narrator and like who who is narrating the story and this guy comes in who is just he's a little alien dude kind of so he ends up narrating I not really narrating but he kind of like can talk into John's brain and order him around and stuff kind of a reader parallel but Jamie you were like yeah there's like this one point where at, for the most part, you don't really notice, but then there's this one point near the end of the act that I'm too lazy to go find right now, where it's, like, in the middle of a sentence, it suddenly gets louder, and I was like, wait, that reads as if someone, like, it suddenly got louder, and it seemed, like, what the all caps said was basically what had been said exactly in the previous sentence, which doesn't usually happen. Was it, that is to say, he is a rather piss poor excuse for a roughneck, if you ask me? Maybe? What page is that? I don't know. I didn't write it down. I wrote... I oh, you noted- just memorized it? <laughs> yeah. No, I just didn't notate the page because I'm dumb. Yeah. I mean, I in general, the all, all caps are just like... Like, Cruxite Dowel is always in all caps, and it's just things in the game. But... Yeah. I don't know. It's an interesting theory. I don't know if that is what Hussey intended, but I think it's just an emphasis thing. That's my, that's my And thought. also, I mean, you can confirm this, but I feel like a lot of Homestuck was retconned. Like, there's this one scene where the mayor is, is it the mayor that is the one, like, typing in the fake names they get? Yeah, um, I think, I think it is. Yeah, I think that gets retconned. I assume, because it happened so far along in the comic, that Hussey did not plan this random character, like, did not write those names and be like, haha, one day this other character will be the one who wrote these names in all along. It's really interesting to me thinking about whether he did actually play that. I don't think he played that one specifically, but a lot of things. Like you were saying earlier with the Homestuck beta starting on April 10th, does that mean he didn't plan 413 imagery stuff in advance? Like, it's very interesting, especially to me as, like, a story writer and D&D writer, because, like, relatable dude. In Homestuck, there, I feel like there is a lot of interjectory kind of text. And I think that's there's a similar thing in Ulysses. Like, they're always, like, like interject the latin and stuff it's kind of introductory oh yeah that is really interesting that's an interesting way to think about it yeah and and like steven's thoughts i feel like a lot of stuff that seems kind of out of blue is supposed to be his thoughts and i feel like it definitely yeah yeah, that's like exactly that is what it is yeah yeah okay well good (laughs) Um, yeah so okay tell me jamie overall what is your impressions of both of them give me a goodreads rating i believe i gave Someone has very, very dutifully, as Homestuck fans tend to be, put all of Homestuck into Goodreads by act, which is beautiful because it means I get book credits for my yearly book goal for reading each act. So I believe I gave the first act of Homestuck a four out of five, which is a big deal for me. My average rating is like 3.6, but that's just because for me, like, a book will not get less than a two if I finish it. Like, if I finish it, it was not bad enough to get a one. But then there's this whole range of three, where three can be anything from, like, yeah, it was pretty good, to, like, wow, yeah, I really, really like this, and it gave me a lot to think about. Four is, like, wow, I love this, and five is, like, the holy grail. I think I have, like, ten books out of 200 that got a five, because five is, like, this book literally changed my life, and I have told people at some point that it is my favorite book. So I'm pretty sure I gave it a four, which is, like, a really big deal for me. Ulysses? I literally read it so long ago. I remember, like, struggling. So it wasn't nearly as fun or as instantly gratifying as Homestuck, but I, like, I enjoyed, and it was definitely a struggle, but I enjoyed reading the first, reading Ulysses, because it's hard, but then there's a lot of gratification for finishing it. Yeah, I would have to agree. I've always liked reading hard books. That's why I read the the Iliad and Aeneid. But... Yeah, I had a, the, the, the funny joke about the dactyls really sealed the deal for me. Yeah, same. <laughs> I chuckled so hard, and I was like, oh my god, I'm such a nerd. I'm laughing out loud at this stupid meter joke, but I thought it was really funny. <laughs> How ridiculous. Two dactyls. How silly would that be? <laughs> How ridiculous. Wait, what is my name? What's my last name? Your full name is Trochaic Trimeter. Trochaic I told trimeter. you this. I texted you this. Yeah, you texted me this. Here at Duncan Houston, it's Trochaic Trimeter. Okay, back to Homestuck and Ulysses. Yeah, back to that. <laughs> There's a lot of really good vocabulary in both of those. I wrote akimbo was a good word I liked in Homestuck. Copacetic. Um, oh, yep, yep, love that one too. Copacetic is a very, Tolkien would approve of the phonology of that word, I feel. I Yeah, I think so too. 
Um, my other notes were I looked up, there's two, Homestuck does a thing where it quotes people and says the wrong ones. I did not write down hmm. who the actual ones were. I'm sure Kira might be able to tell me. But the moon's an errant thief and her pale fire she snatches from the sun. Don't know who John said it was, but it's actually Shakespeare. Shakespeare, yeah. Um, um, I think he said Mark Twain. Yes, and then the second one, which was Walt Whitman, I think he said, when, when two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one that knows how to yield. That was Walt Whitman, or he said it was Walt Whitman? I think he said it was Walt Whitman. He said it was Walt Whitman. I think it's like... It's Lao Tzu. Oh. I can't pronounce that. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that horribly, but that's who it is. And then there's another one where he said it was Oscar Wilde, and then he shaded Oscar Wilde. Oh, wait, no, that was the one where he said, that was the one that you thought was just now, was uh, Walt Whitman, but it was Oscar Wilde. And then Hussey goes, wise words by a man who likely could resist everything but temptation. <laughs> it's oh, like, yeah. oh, shit, shade Oscar Wilde, why don't you? Okay, I remember why that, right, remember earlier I was like, I have a random note and I don't remember how it connected. Uh, yes, I do remember when you said that. I figured out how it connected by searching it in our Discord chat. Mm. Um... It was last Monday when we were talking about King Lear, uh-huh. and I said, I feel like a tragedy of modern literature is that we got so good at it, it being literature, that we miss out on moments like he was running around in the rain with a letter and then he decided to sleep because it doesn't make sense for the character. And you said, you are completely correct, that is the beauty of Homestuck. And I said, let's talk about that in episode one. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah, to summarize that thought for our listeners... We were memeing about how ridiculous Shakespeare is and how the characters do ridiculous things. And I said, yes. And they also do that in Homestuck. And that's like the only modern, well, not the only one, but I love how Homestuck does that. And I think a lot of times amateur authors will try to do a thing where they like write a story and the character just like does something random and maybe intentionally or otherwise they're trying to imitate that like kind of Shakespearean like, and then the character lies down to sleep in the rain. But it's very, very, very hard to do well. And I think Shakespeare did it well. And I think Andrew Hussey did it well. Um, <laughs> but is it's Homestuck... remarkable that Hussey did it well because not many modern authors do. Is Homestuck the Internet Shakespeare? Is Homestuck the Internet Shakespeare? Welcome to season two of our podcast. <laughs> I mean, this goes into the theory of, well, I don't even know if that's, is it, co- I don't know if that's a theory. Is it confirmed that Hussey has had people ghostwrite or like how do other guest writers? I don't know. But and then there's oh, the ghost theory of... right. I think you said go straight. And I was like, I don't think Homestuck turned anyone straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you'd be correct there. I think it did much the opposite for mostly everyone. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, there's that theory with Shakespeare. That that he wasn't even a real dude. Well, yeah, he was a real dude. Yeah, there is, in fact, that theory. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why I know about that. Hint, it's because I was in a play about it. <laughs> oh, oh, well, yeah, you were in a play about it. We also wrote... Oh. Uh, we play wrote, adjacent about it. We wrote an adjacent pl- a play adjacent. A murder mystery about. dinner party. I feel like people knows what know what those are. Yeah. We I wrote, feel like I always assume people don't know what they are, and then people are like, "Of course I know what those are," and I'm like, "Oh, okay, sorry." But sometimes I say that, and people are like, "What the hell is a murder mystery dinner party?" And I'm like, oh, "Well, it's a, a mystery party where there's a fake murder <laughs> <laughs> and it's theater also, and there's dinner." Yep. <laughs> so we do those in case you were wondering. Yep. You can find them on our website. <laughs> can you? Um, uh, like one, maybe. There, what we did, we do have a website for them. I believe it's sites.google.murdermysterydatabase or something. It's got some interesting stuff on it, but I don't really update it, so I would recommend not trying to use it and just contacting one of us directly if you would like more information about our murder mystery dinner theaters. Right at Ulysses Homesick Murder Mystery Dinner Theater. Oh, we should. That's so sexy. We should do that thing we've always talked about where we have like two of us doing them separately and then they combine and people don't know that they're going to combine, but then they do. Yes. And like you can run the Homestuck one and I'll run the Ulysses one. Yes. And then they'll just like be the same thing because they are. I'm kidding. I'm not saying they're the same thing. I really don't (laughs) want people to say we said that that they're the same thing. (laughs) Because I've already had people tell me that. Like, I posted about it on Reddit, and I was like, hey, we're doing comparative literature, and everyone was like, oh, you can't say that they're the same thing! And I was like, I said we're doing comparative literature. (laughs) I mean, like, I don't even think you could say, like, you can't even say Ulysses and the Odyssey are exactly the same thing. So how could you say Ulysses and Homestuck are exactly the same Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I feel like there's a spectrum of same. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And I definitely, like, calling it, saying Homestuck the Internet's Ulysses implies a degree of sameness beyond comparative literature. That's 
agree. That's like understandable. Why would you just assume that? But that's not what we're saying. We called it that because other people are saying it. Yeah. In a perfect world, we would have named our podcast Is Homestuck the Internet's Ulysses, but that wasn't as fun of an acronym. <laughs> Itchu. Itchu. <laughs> Itchu. Issue. Issue. I feel like we talked about this. I feel like we did. I deja vu again. Well, that was an actual deja vu. That was intellectual deja vu, not like emotional deja vu. (laughs) Here's a random note I had. Let's talk about Steven versus John. Well, I mean, the major difference is that, like, John is the main character of Homestuck. Yeah, that's what I Whereas Steven is not the main character of Ulysses, and we have not met yet the main character of Ulysses. Yeah, and Ulysses even starts with a sentence about Buck Mulligan, and... Yes, that definitely confused me a big lot when I tried to read it over the summer, because it was like, <laughs> whatever you look up Ulysses, it's like, Ulysses is a story about Leopold Bloom, and then you open it, and it's like, stately, plump Buck Mulligan, and you're like, wait, whomst? <laughs> whomst? Yeah, and, you know, in stark contrast, Homestuck is a young man stands in his bedroom, and that's John, and yes, he's the main character. Well, I mean, like... You could debate that, but I would say he's the main character. There's a lot of, like, definitely, like, literary significance. Kind of like, well, just for an example that Kira will really like. You can do, like, a Great Gatsby kind of style where, like, debatably, Nick is not the main character of the Great Gatsby. Gatsby is. But Nick is the narrator. Just like in Ulysses, how, like, Leopold is apparently the main character, but Stephen is the one whose, like, thoughts we see. So far, at least. And it'll be interesting to see whether that morphs into, like, a Stephen is still being the thought narrator, but we're just hearing a lot about Leopold, or if he actually becomes the narrator. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see about that. I think he'll maybe become the narrator. Is Telemachus the name of the boat? No, Telemachus is Odysseus' son. Okay. Which is interesting. I thought this, and then I also read it. (laughs) Read it. The first three books, ep- episodes, it seems, of Ulysses focus on Stephen, from what I was seeing on the spark note. And the first three, actually, I don't know if it's three, but the beginning of the Odyssey is about Telemachus and Athena uh, kind of gallivanting around trying to find Odysseus. So... Ah, uh, yes, that is basically what's happening so far. Yes, that's, that's the parallel. Un- right I understand now. Yeah. There's going to be some really interesting Odyssey Ulysses stuff. Is I feel Leopold like... Stephen's dad then? I don't think so. Okay. No, definitely not because Leopold's wife is Molly Bloom and like Stephen's dad just died. Oh, I mean, Steve, you mom mean Stephen's died. mom? <laughs> def- well, I don't know if she just died, but she's definitely dead. Yeah, she died um, and it was recently. Yeah, I wanted to say this actually. I feel like a lot of the ways in which they are the same is both by being homestuck and ulysses by being these like grandiose works of literature is that they are both definitely rife with illusions yes both and i mean this is really interesting to think about like homestuck is kind of known for alluding to like not even alluding but like being connected with hussey's other works like problem sleuth and um his sweet bro and hella jeff like does that count yeah that totally counts in the same way that like steven dedalus is like the main character of another one of joyce's works yeah. And it kind of honestly how, like, Faulkner used to write all in the same... County. County. I I guess that's just the thing good writers do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I do that with my D&D. Yeah, I'm planning to do that. I don't does have... Does that mean I'm a good writer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> well, thanks. I really like that parallel. Yeah, so I, I feel like paying attention, because, like... I, the most Homestuck interaction I've had before we started recording for this podcast is just Kira talking about Dirk constantly, and... Call me out, why don't you? Yeah, Dirk has a lot of, like, classics, Mm -hmm. uh, like, not even really illusions, it's just, like, this is an interest that the character has in the same way, and I mean, like, Greek, obviously Ulysses has a bunch of, you can buy books that are just, like, you, illusions in Ulysses, and I should probably get one. I don't even need to buy it. I'm, like, literally currently in a library right now. I could just go get one. I read some really good quote the other day about how illusions are, like, something about illusions are really enjoyable for the reader. Something about that. I don't remember. I feel like illusions are just pop culture references, but, like, classy. 
Yeah, I think you're completely correct. I remember I have a friend who I used to like make YouTube videos with back in middle school and we would write things sure. and I'd be like, oh, we should put in a pop culture reference here to be funny. And he, we were like 13. He was very mature when he said this and I still admire him for it. But he was like, I don't like pop culture references because they date things. Oh, you've told me this before. Yeah, and I think that that's a very admirable thing for a young mediocre, if I'm being honest, when we were in middle school, YouTuber to to like be conscious of. On one hand, having pop culture references definitely does date things. I think that in some situations that's not inherently bad. And like you think of a lot of movies from the 80s where they have pop culture references and it's just like it's funny. Like even if we don't understand them, we understand that they are pop culture references. But I think illusions are a step above that in that to be an illusion and not a pop culture reference, you kind of have to be referencing something that is timeless, that has withstood the test of time. And to that end, it doesn't date your work because it makes it like referencing like Plato's Apology is not going to date it because for most of history, people have been referencing Plato's Apology. Mm -hmm. And in a thousand years, people are probably still going to be referencing Plato's Apology. I was directly pa paraphrasing Ada Palmer when I said that, by the way. Um, <laughs> is this the part of the is this the part of the podcast where we plug Ada Palmer? <laughs> <laughs> Go read Terra Ignota, guys. Yeah, it is. No, there's this interview where she's like, 400 years ago, there was a cute king of Spain. So in 400 years, there will probably still be a king of Spain. I love her with my whole being. Anyway, she's an author. That's a digression. Yeah, that's my point. Is yeah. that pop culture I really like, I really are like that illusions point. of a different sort. Um, do you want to do an out? Did you see what I wrote on the, on the... I did, and I can't think of a favorite quote. Really? Well, hold on. Let me see if I wrote one. I mean, my... No, I can't think of one. Uh, I mean, I read the one from Ulysses that I really, really liked. I'll read it again while you kind of come up with something. It wasn't even, like, that good. I just... I have a big thing for rhythm, and the rhythm was just very, very good. Which... I will say Joyce's rhythm is not always that clean. Some of you, some of Dubliners, I was like, oh, I would have rephrased that sentence. But that's just the way I am. Quote, Stephen Dedalus, displeased and sleepy, leaned his arms on the top of the staircase and looked coldly at the shaking, gurgling face that blessed him, equine in its length and at the light, untonsured hair, grained and hued like pale oak. Unquote. So beautiful. I just love quoting literature. I think my favorite quote is like the size of Texas or just Rhode Island. They're always throwing around these geographical comparisons to give us a sense of scale. Like it really means anything to us, but it's like, it doesn't matter. It's always just like, wow, that's pretty fucking big. Like Mr. President, there's a meteor coming, sir. Oh yeah, how big is it? It's the size of Texas, sir. Oh shit. Or how big is it? It's the size of New York, sir. Oh shit. Sir, I'm afraid the comet is the size of your mom's dick. Oh snap. Sir, are you familiar with Jupiter? Yeah, you mean like the planet? Yeah, well, it's that big, sir. Hmm, that sounds pretty big. I have a question. Is it Jupiter? Yes, sir. Earth is literally under siege by planet fucking Jupiter. Oh, shit. Anyway, later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that bit so much. That's, like, my favorite. That's, like, a really great, you know, introduction into what the hell Dave is like all the time. Yeah. Uh-huh. I love him. I love that. I love Dave, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> oh, no. We're just Dave and Rose. Yeah. <laughs> we, you didn't, we've literally we talked about this we've before. We've talked about it before, but now that we're making a podcast, like, I'm thinking about it more. About Homestuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not Rose. I'm Jamie. I use they, them pronouns. And I think this episode, I was a linguistics major. And I'm Kira. I use he, him pronouns. And this episode at the beginning, I was a gay boy. And now I'm, I'm still a gay boy. Homestuck did not turn you straight. That's what this episode should be called. <laughs> yeah, this episode is called Homestuck did not turn you straight. Great. Episode two, we will be reading the first part of Act Two of Homestuck up to page, it's 248 until 442. Perfect. Yes, that's the pages. And then we're reading episode two of Ulysses. And that's, is that at Acts two and three of Homestuck? No, that's just the first part of Act 2. Oh, it's Act 2 is longer. Okay, yeah. So it'll be Act 2, Part 1 of Homestuck. And yeah, you can either pause and re-listen to where we said the page number just now. I already forgot it. Or you can check out our reading schedule on our Tumblr, hciu.tumblr.com. And Ulysses is just Episode 2. So 
stay tuned for our next episode where we will compare more. Yeah, and we will make a leaderboard for our fun games, and we will also probably make a posting schedule. We should do that. I think that's going to be it for this episode. I'm doing peace signs, like, over my face, which you can't see, because this is a podcast. Me too now. I'm also doing that. This is like that bit in Homestuck where John and Rose are texting each other, and then Rose is like, you're typing this with one of your silly disguises on right now. (laughs) And then is that a parallel to later when they're talking? I think I send you a picture of that. And he's like, one of them, I don't remember which one, is like, stop whatever silly thing you're about to say next. Probably. I love them. I love Rose. All right. That's the outro. I love Rose. I love Rose. See you next week. (laughs) Next. See you sometime. (laughs) 